we have reached Himalayan mountains. The climate is very good over here. Now I'm feeling relaxed over here. But yes, now it's freezing me a bit. But I'm feeling relaxed. But at my home day, it was very, very hot. Now I'm feeling relaxed. But friends, have you ever thought that how these Himalayan mountains are formed? No problem. If you don't know how these Himalayan mountains are formed, I'm gonna tell you. So friends, please watch my video lecture on this in which today I'm going to tell you that how Himalayan mountains are formed. Okay, so friends, let's join a class in which we're going to discuss about this. Okay friends, so now let's start our class. So friends, see, our today's topic is that how Himalayas are formed. But before getting into a today's topic, I would like to tell you one thing that there are some theories which are very very important to know. So friends, our first theory is continental drift theory. Okay? So see, do you know that who had invented this theory? This theory is given by Alfred Wagner. And do you know in which year? In 1912, Alfred Wagner has given this theory in 1912 and Alfred Wagner was a German metrologist. Okay friends? So now see that uh, this theory, continental drift theory is based on what? Don't know? No problem. I'm gonna tell you. Okay friends? So this theory, continental drift theory is based on another theory which is tectonic plates theory okay friends so friends now do you know that this theory continental drift theory is about what so this theory continental drift theory is about present division of continents and oceans all right friends Okay friends, so now as I told you that this theory, continental drift theory is based on the, a theory, tectonic plates theory. Okay friends, so now first of all, let's understand the theory of tectonic plates firstly, okay? Okay friends, so now as we all know that our earth consists of three layers, crust, mantle and core. Crust at the top mantle at the between and core at the last okay friends so now see according to this theory tectonic plates theory crust is divided into seven major plates and some minor plates just like indo-australian plate african plate and other but friends now here is a question for you that do you know that india was located on which plate if you know the answer, so please write your answer in the comment section and tell me. So friends, now do you know that all these plates are continuously moving? But why they are continuously moving? They are moving because of the running molten magma which is beneath the crust. Alright? Friends, so now do you know that due to the movement of these plates, three major changes occur and what are these changes first is folding second is faulting and third is earthquake and volcanic eruption all right friends so now i'm going to tell you that what is folding so friends see when two plates come closer to each other it it leads to folding and friends this activity is responsible for the formation of mountains. Okay? Okay friends, so now I am going to tell you that what is faulting. So friends, see when two, when two plates go away from each other, this activity is known as faulting. And friends, that this activity is responsible for the formation of rift valley all right okay, friends so now at last when two plates slide to each other this activity is responsible for earthquake and volcanic eruption okay 
okay so now friends um i think that you all might have understood the theory of tectonic plates all right friends so now let's come back to our theory continental drift theory okay friends so now according to this theory around 250 million years ago there was only and only one continent which was known as pangaea and there was only and only one ocean which was known as panthalassa but friends you see in the present time there are seven continents and there are five oceans and around 250 million million years ago there was only and only one ocean and only and only one land mass means only and only one continent okay friends friends now do you know that this pangaea is divided into two parts northern part and southern part northern part was known as laurasia and southern part was known as gondwana land but friends there is a very sad story that both this northern part and southern part cannot live together forever because they have to split away due to the movement of plates okay friends so now after splitting all these plates started to drift in different different directions right and you know that india was located on indo australian plate and indo australian plate drifted towards the north and collided with the eurasian eurasian plate okay thus in indian landmass was formed okay okay friends so like this india ka landmass to form ho gaya but here is a very very important question that we have to understand and that is that how himalayan mountains are formed so friends see this is indo australian plate and this is eurasian plate and between indo australian plate and eurasian plate there is a sea named tethy sea okay and there is a there was a huge quantity of sedimentary rock in tethy sea right so when indo australian indo australian plate and eurasian plate both were both were coming closer means indo australian plate collided so then sedimentary rocks compress and uplifted right and this formed a mountain system right and this mountain system is known as himalayan mountains all right friends so like this finally we have understood that how himalayan mountains are formed right so now i hope that you all have understood our today's topic that how himalayan mountains are formed and in case of any query you can ask your query in the comment section and i'm making you sure that i will answer each and every query of yours and yes in my next video lecture we'll meet with a new concept till then bye bye